This video depicts global earthquake activity from January 1st to December 10th of 2011 along the infamous Ring of Fire, a horseshoe-shaped region roughly defined by the perimeter of the Pacific Ocean. This ring, also referred to as the Circum-Pacific Seismic Belt, is characterized by 90% of the world's earthquakes, 75% of the world's active and dormant volcanoes, and numerous tsunamis. These geological events are caused by the collisions of lithospheric plates as shown by this USGS color map in which the ring of fire is highlighted in yellow. The inset map in the lower right corner within this virtual tour provides a regional reference for the current viewing window as shown by the red box. Use this to orient yourself because we've got a lot of ground to cover and we'll be moving rather quickly. The semi-transparent inverted cones depict earthquakes with a magnitude greater than 1.0 that have occurred within 2011. The seismic data represented by these cones was downloaded from the USGS Earthquake Hazards website and plotted within Google Earth by using the Rockworks Cone Mapping Program in conjunction with the Rockworks flyover program. In addition, much of the informational content for this narration was derived from Wikipedia. The height of each cone is inversely proportional to the depth of the earthquake source. The taller the cone, the deeper the earthquake. Whereas the radius and color are proportional to the magnitude. Hotter colors, such as yellow and red, correspond to the higher magnitude events. Colder colors, such as purple and dark blue, correspond to the lower magnitude earthquakes. You may also notice numeric values at the tip of each cone showing the magnitude value. As we travel northward, up the western coast of South America, we're seeing earthquakes and volcanism caused by the subduction of the Nazca Plate below the South American Plate. The Andes Mountains to the east are caused by the uplift of the South American plate near the collision zone. As we move towards Central America, the geometries change because we're now looking at the collision zone between two smaller plates in which the Cocos Plate to the west is subducting below the overriding Caribbean plate to the east. Unlike the South American plate, which is overlain by continental crust, the Caribbean plate does not have any continental material on top, resulting in a land of annealed volcanoes. As we travel up the western coast of Mexico, the Cocos plate is subducting below the North American plate in a fashion similar to what was previously shown along the western edge of South America. The Gulf of California marks a transition in which the huge Pacific plate is sliding laterally in a northwesterly direction against the North American plate which is moving to the southeast. This is called a transform boundary. Locally, it's called the San Andreas Fault. Make note of the magnitudes for the earthquakes along this boundary for later comparison when we get to Japan. It's worth noting that the magnitude and distance to a seismic event does not necessarily represent the destructive capabilities of an earthquake. In addition to earthquake magnitude, the properties of the overlying or adjacent material are equally important. For example, soft, unconsolidated sediments such as a water-saturated sand above a seismic event represent a recipe for disaster. Conversely, a hard granite adjacent to a seismic event will typically fare much better. The transform boundary between the Pacific and North American plates gives way to a more complex geometry as the small Juan de Fuca plate is subducting underneath the North American plate. The earthquakes and volcanism of the Cascade Volcanic Arc and Pacific Ranges are the result of this collision. As we travel northwestward, eventually turning to the southwest, we see the trench within the Gulf of Alaska formed by the Pacific Plate moving northwestward below the North American Plate. The formation of the Alaska Range is one of the results. 
As we continue our counterclockwise tour along the Aleutians, notice the subduction zone and seismic activity associated with the collision of the northwestern portion of the Pacific Plate and the southwestern edge of the North American Plate. The Kamchatka Peninsula marks the northeastern corner of the Okchats Plate, a region that hosts some of the strongest megathrust earthquakes in the world. This plate is moving toward the southwest, while the Pacific Plate subducts below it from the southeast. On March 11th, a magnitude 8.9 earthquake located 70 kilometers east of the Hoshika Peninsula of Tohoku produced a tsunami that traveled up to 10 kilometers inland. The result was massive devastation within the Sendai area of Japan, including hydrogen gas explosions, level 7 meltdowns, and the release of radioactive waters at the three Fukushima nuclear power plants. As we travel southward from Japan, we encounter a complex array of small plates along the edge of the huge Pacific Plate. Earthquakes and massive volcanoes typify Taiwan, the Philippines, the Moluccas, Papua New Guinea, the Solomon Islands, Vanuatu, Fiji, the Samoans, and Tonga. We end this video on the southwestern edge of the Ring of Fire, where on February 22nd, a 6.3 magnitude earthquake at the Australian Pacific Plate boundary virtually destroyed the city of Christchurch, New Zealand. The Pacific Plate rotates about a point south of Australia. It moves at approximately 7 centimeters per year, about as fast as your fingernails grow. It is the largest of the plates and hence the largest physiographic feature on the surface of the Earth. Thanks for watching.